Praise God. Praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I pray that you are having a blessed day in the Lord. Hallelujah to his name. I say give him glory. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. And if you don't know, yes, I'm on when the power of God been on me all morning. I feel it. I see it. I thank God for it. Hallelujah to his name. This is the first day of the full liquid fast. 14 day fast. We haven't done this in a while. Praise God. Praise God. I hear God saying, come on somebody. Hallelujah. The body of Christ. We got to get back to God. The body of Christ. We got to have power. The body of Christ is in trouble. The body of Christ have become worldly. The body of Christ don't want nobody to tell them nothing. The body of Christ. Hallelujah to his name. Oh, this is, let me tell you something. This fast here. I see change. I see deliverance. I see promotion. I see, I see. And if you notice the title of this um, live, and I want you to go ahead and tag and share because I'm telling you right now, something is going to happen. Oh, come on, somebody. Let me just go ahead and tell you. Every time we do a full liquid fast, everything change. You change. You get deeper. Come on, somebody. Because you are sacrificing not just food, but you're sacrificing saying, God, here I am. Pour it in, God. Pour it in, God. Pour it in, God. I need you, God. Rebuke me. Reprove me. Correct me. Hallelujah. How dare we think that we are not rebuke you. Come on, somebody. I made up a name, rebuke you. <laughs> so let me pray first. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, God. I give you honor and I give you praise in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray for this 14-day fast that you keep us, Father God, that you sanctify us, Father God, that we hear you, Father God. We repent of everything that we may have said or done knowingly or unknowingly, Father God. Teach us, reach us, Father God. Use us, Father God. You get the glory, God, because our story is not finished. Oh, Father God, I just thank you for this day. We give you honor and we give you praise. I pray the blood of Jesus because it's the blood the blood the blood still works the blood heals the blood delivers hallelujah the blood corrects inspects and respects in the name of Jesus oh father God I thank you I give you honor and I give you praise in your precious son Jesus Christ of Nazareth we thank you God we give you honor and let us say on one accord Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now, let me just tell you this. For the 14-day fast, every day, and, and I thank God for him because he actually gave me the word on Friday. I think it was Friday. Um, last Friday. Well, God gave me the word labor. And actually, I thought it was just for that one day. He said, Deanna, the body of Christ don't want to labor anymore. Oh, come on, somebody. They don't want to travail anymore. Come on, somebody. And if you can't labor and travail, you can't prevail, God says. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We don't want to get on our face for each other anymore. We'd rather talk about each other. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. So you, you have to learn how to labor. So I'm going to break this thing down. It's going to be a good teaching. I promise you that. So I actually have the definition of labor. So the definition of labor is to exert one's powers over body or mind, especially with painful or strenuous effort, work. Oh, this is going to get good in a minute. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So, 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 so you mean to tell me that when you labor, there's going to be some painful and strenuous, and it's over the mind, mind, body, and soul. Oh, I just got through saying something. Hold on. Let me finish. It says to suffer from some disadvantage or distress. It says to be in labor of giving birth. That's what I want you to focus on, of giving birth. God says that you are in labor. Some of you are in labor. That's why you're going through. So let's break this thing down. So when you're in labor, what happens? There's contractions. Problems, <laughs> tests, <laughs> trials. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And, and when you are in labor, what happens? Your body is going through something. Your mind is going through something. And, and you're in distress. You're kind of burdened. Come on, somebody. And, and you got to understand what induces labor. Oh, come on. Pressure, pressure, pressure. God will allow some things so you can induce labor, so you can get, get, get what he's trying to give you. Your destiny, your gift. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And so you find yourself in contractions. Now, some contractions last for a long period of time. Some last for two hours. There have some, been some. There are some that last for 24. Some say 48. Some say 96. It all depends on the calling, come on, somebody, that God has called you to, that your contractions. And then sometimes the contractions hit five to ten minutes, two to three minutes, one minute. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So the pressure of, that God allows in your life to produce 
what he wants you to have, to produce the gifts, to produce the calling, to produce the anointing. Come on, somebody. You're going to be in labor, and therefore you have labor pains. Come on, somebody. But what you do when you have those labor pains? Push. Oh, come on, somebody. Push. Come on, somebody. Push. Oh, but it hurts. Push anyway. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You got to push. When you're in labor, God says, most people don't like pain. Oh, come on, somebody. The tests, the trials, the tribulation, they can knock you to the core of your spirit. I mean, make a grown man cry. Make a grown woman cry. Make you want to back up. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And say, God, I don't want it no more. God, are are you even with me? God, why me? Come on, somebody. You will say everything because you are in labor. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Now, I want to tell you something, though. The body of Christ, as we are in labor, right? It says that the symptoms are pain. The symptoms, it could be hard pain, sharp pain, dull pain, a numbing pain. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. But nevertheless, it's pain. It's painful. Let me tell you why we're going through this. Different levels, different devils. Every time that you're going to another level, you have to be processed. And God would push you. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God will push you. And the only way that sometimes he can push you is apply pressure. Oh, that's what a lot of say. Um, pressure. Pressure busts a pipe. Pressure will either make you or break you, said the Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And a lot of people can't stand pressure. And I'm going to tell you what has happened, God says. God says the world have come into the church. And, and, and I got to say this thing the way God wants me to say because some people will be offended. I'm all for education, but that's what have happened. Education has came into the body of Christ. And so now we are a doctor, we are a reverend, we are this and we are that. But God just want me to ask you one thing this morning. Can you just be anointed? Come on, somebody. Can you just be anointed? Can you help? Your brother or sister by having the power of the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is always the greatest teacher. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. You see what has happened now. Business. Ministry is business. So now everybody is, is, they're doing business. Oh, come on somebody. Everything is business. Everything is professional. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear me this morning. So now, instead of having an intimate relationship with God, you have a professional one. Honey, let me tell you something. I don't care how many doctorates you have. I don't care how many degrees you have. I don't care how long you went to Bible college. I don't care where you went to Bible college. If you don't have the power of the Holy Ghost, if you don't have the anointing, then guess what? You are not God's. Ooh, y'all ain't ready for me. And I know you're going to be offended, some of you. Because here's the deal. The power of the Holy Ghost will teach you on a level that no man could ever teach you. You don't hear what I'm saying. And when the Holy Ghost teach you, oh honey, you are certified because you will be tried. You will be tried. I'm talking about you think that you have pressure. The more that you are anointed, the more that you will be tried, God says. Oh, come on somebody. He says, for those I love, that's who I chastise. That's who I rebuke. We have a church unchurched that don't want to listen to anybody. You don't want to come under subjection. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, y'all like to say, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, I'm about to do it. I'm about to say it. I'm about to say it. How you going to be good and you sinning? Mm. How you going to be pastoring? Oh, Lord, y'all ain't going to like me this morning. You ain't going to like me. How you going to be pastor? Let me take off my, my glasses. Y'all can see my eyes with that. How you going to pastor, pastor, and you sleeping with your members? How? You like Samson. You don't even know the Lord left you. That's not of God. And yeah, I'm saying it because I ain't scared of you. Others may be scared of you. I'm not scared of you. And, and hold on. That's not to bash nobody. But here's the deal. As Nathan went to David, as Samuel went to Saul and told them, you out of order. Who are you to think that you cannot be corrected, inspected, and checked? Because even I can. It does not matter who you are, pastor, preacher, teacher, apostle. If you are out of order, you are out of order. And guess what? A real man and woman, God will send to you and say, you out of order. Because that's what's happening in the church. We don't have the standard anymore. Because now y'all want to say, y'all want to push it under the rug. Or or don't say nothing about my pastor. I'm going to say something about your pastor. Especially if God tell me to. 
Because that's what's happening. Oh, I'm about to preach this thing. Hallelujah. For the power of the Holy Ghost. You got broken people trying to pastor. You got broken people trying to lead. You got broken people trying to uh, lay hands. How are you going to lay hands when you're broken? And, and what I mean by that? What, what do I mean broken? Let me break that thing down. If you are in any type of sin, should you be singing, leading worship? Should you be on any pulpit if you are any sin? Hold on, that means me too. I do not get a pass. Hallelujah. Because when God gives you a word, it's for the person first. Hallelujah to his name. How dare you get up there in sin? Because all you're doing is spewing out. Spewing out spirits. Spewing, spewing out attachments. And you wonder why the body is sick. Because if the pastor and the leader is sick, the whole body is sick. And God going to get you. Or oh, you can better believe it. And the sad part, sooner or later, King Saul destroyed himself because he didn't want to listen to nobody. David had enough sense when Nathan gave him that parable because he had slept with Bathsheba and put her husband in the front line to get killed. He said, give him a parable. God said, give him a parable. What did, he didn't even understand that Nathan was talking about him. He said, that man should be killed. And Nathan say, that man is you. David abhorred himself. He repented. So that's the difference between King Saul and David. David repented. And for that, God say, I'm going to make you king of New Jerusalem. And if you notice, David never sinned after that. Because he understood that God wasn't playing with him. But hold on. Even though he repented, what happened? The baby between him and Bathsheba died. So just because you repent, God's still going to backlash you because of the fact that, guess what? I got to teach you not to play with me no more. I got to teach you the oracles of me. I got to teach you how to walk with me. I got to teach you how to follow me. I got to teach you how to be obedient, David. We have so many Davids in the body of Christ. God is calling people to the next level. But you can't go to the next level if you don't repent. You can't go to the next level if you don't stop sinning. You can't go to the next level doing uh, drugs. Oh, I'm about to go here this morning, honey. How you going to give birth when you... No, 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 hold on. Y'all know there's people that are on drugs, especially crack, and we're not counting anybody. What happens? They usually, they usually have a crack baby, right? So how can you birth anything good if you are doing bad, pastor, apostle, preacher, teacher, bishop, bishop, evangelist, you can't. Because sin produces sin, just like anointing produces anointing. How can so 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 let me ask you something. What are you giving birth to? Because you can give birth both ways. Oh come on, somebody hallelujah. You can give birth to the uh, something that God has anointed you to do and deliver pureness, truth. Honesty, integrity. I'm talking about teach people how to be loyal to God. Teach people how to stay with God, to be kept by God. Or you can be showing them it's okay to sin and be in the pulpit. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. You don't hear what I'm saying because that's what's being taught to this generation. It's okay to go have sex and come preach. It's okay to go get drunk and come preach. It's okay to go do what you do and come back in the pulpit. You guys, let me tell you what's going to happen. Sooner or later, that hammer going to fall. And I have seen it. I have been in ministry 23 years. Hear me, beloved. Hear me, beloved. I've seen the best fall down, and it hurt my heart. I was not one that said, ooh, I told you. Or, 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 or look at him now. No. That is hurtful when you see a brother and sister fall from grace. I.e., Eddie Long. That hurt me. I was there when that, I, I was um, in Atlanta in 1989. I was actually under Dr. Cynthia Hell when Eddie Long was growing, Bishop Eddie Long, let me, let me give him his rightful title. I know he did wrong, but let me give him his rightful title because y'all don't understand, he was still anointed. He just sinned and didn't repent. Oh, I'm going here. I don't care who's going to get mad. It's just the truth this morning. And so I remember his congregation was growing so fast that, the church we were in were bigger. He said, I'm going to need that church. And Dr. Cynthia Hell and him were friends, so he actually brought the church. I saw him in his power. I saw the glory of God on his life. 
And look what God allowed. Do you not understand that that was an example for the body of Christ? Do you not understand what happened? Well, I'm going to have to break that thing down. This is what God told me. Because I asked God. I'm nosy like that. Yes, I would ask God. I said, God, what happened? God said, Deanna, I would have spared him not to die in such a way. Now, for you that can't handle hard truth, I'm sorry. God bless you. Hallelujah. Go to God and ask him. You don't have to always believe what people say. Just go to God for yourself. Because I was really hurt. I said, God, why did you allow him to die like that? God said, Deanna, he did not want to publicly repent. You see how we get on here publicly and preach? Well, if this is protocol by God and man, by the way, if you sin publicly and you do things, even privately, truth be told, and you sin, you are supposed to come before the people and repent. Just repent. Because you did it, God said, repent openly. If you do not do it, then God does what he will. Hallelujah to his name. So this stuff is real. This stuff is not this not to play with. But let me read you another scripture. Praise God. Hallelujah to his name. And that was sad. Y'all can't tell me that one sad. But but if you didn't know him like I did, you didn't see the power of glory. I'm not just on TV in person. Then you don't understand how sad it was. The same thing with Samson. Samson was a mighty man. Come on, somebody. Killed a, what, a thousand with a jaw? Y'all don't understand the power of God, do you? But let me tell you what God says here. This is the King James Version. I'm in Acts 27. All right. Acts 5, 27. And he says, And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did we straightly command you not that you should not teach in this name, Jesus Christ? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. And then this is what Peter said, 29, verse 29. He says, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. I don't know who told Brother Ed alone not to repent, but he listened to man. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. It's a dangerous thing to listen to man before God. Because man, and that's what's happening. Y'all might not want to touch it, but it's true. In the body of Christ, people will listen to man before God. I promised myself I would never do that. Because I see the devastation that comes after that. How could you put a man before God? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And yet you are doing it. And the reason why I said it is because now no one wants to publicly just admit when they're wrong. Step down when they're wrong. Don't you understand that we are all examples and we're supposed to actually be there for each other. That means I'm supposed to tell you the truth, good, bad, happy, sad, love me, you don't love me, whatever. You leave me, whatever. I'm supposed to tell you because guess what? The blood, as a matter of fact, let me go to that scripture right now. Isaiah says the blood will be required. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying this morning. Praise God. Praise God for the power of the Holy Ghost. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. We have to come back to the oracles of God. Because you see, God is birthing something in this hour. God is birthing the deuteronomous power. Deuteronomous power. And you cannot possess that power unless you're pure. I didn't say perfect. I said pure. How do you get pure? You got to stay fasting. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You don't hear what I'm saying. Because this kind come out but by fasting and prayer. You're wondering why we can't cast nothing out. You're wondering why the power of God is not showing up in the places. Because ain't nobody want to fast. Ain't nobody want to prevail. Ain't nobody want to just toil. Oh, what does toil mean? Toil means to go through rough things. Oh, it's going to get rough. When you anoint it, people going to feel intimidated. People going to hate you. Oh, come on, somebody. People going to talk about you? Mm-mm-mm. Y'all made me forget what I was going to do. Okay. All right, praise God. I hear you, Holy Ghost. So, let me tell you something. During this 14-day fast, I pray that you pray for the nation, pray for the world, pray for the leaders, because all truth before God, most of them are out of order. And they know it. That's why they don't want no prophet to tell them nothing. You want to know why they don't accept prophets anymore? 
because we are the mouthpiece of God. Hold on. Didn't say we were God. Didn't say we still human. All right. We still fail. We still have our situations. We still have sins. Oh, you didn't know that? So nobody's perfect. But if God have called a true prophet, you better respect that prophet. It is a dangerous thing to put your mouth on a prophet. And many have. And with all due respect, I have seen things. Hold on, I got to get this scripture. I have seen so many things happen to people that have put their mouth, not just on me, on other people. And that's not to scare you because y'all get mad. Y'all be like, oh, well, who they think they are? Um, nobody, just a, a servant of God. Remember Miriam. What did Miriam do? Miriam didn't like Moses' wife because she was actually of black descent. She was Egyptian. So y'all know we ain't got to go through all that Hebrew stuff. But I will say this. Miriam talked about him. What happened? God caused leprosy to come up on Miriam. Moses even went to God and said, you know, God, I forgive her. God said, I, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear anything. I'm going to keep it on her until she's outside of the tent because she's going to understand that you're still mine. I just said something. Even if a person do fall from grace, they're still gods. Do you remember David and King Saul? When he had the chance to kill Saul, he said it won't be by me because he is still the Lord's anointed. So then question, how do people feel that they can actually put their mouth on a man or woman of God that's anointed and think that there will be no repercussions? You must be crazy. You must be. I know it's tight, but it's right. But I tell you one thing. I see a lot happening. And a lot of people say, oh, there she go with the gloom and doom. Why about, how about this? How about the whole body of Christ just repent? Me too. We just repent daily. How about this? We start being honest with each other. Start talking about each other's back. How about this? Why don't you elders in the church, in every church of America, why don't you open your mouths when you see a young preacher doing all kind of stuff? Ooh, I'm about to go here again. You know when the streets know. Everybody know, huh? Mm, I said it. You know when the streets know, that means everybody know, right? Catch your head, pastor. Catch your head, apostle. Catch your head, bishop. Do you think that God is not going to expose you? The, the question is when? Y'all ain't ready for me, huh? And some of you right now, you're going through some rough patches. I feel the power of God. Hallelujah. You're going through some rough things. That's your labor you're in. And some of you, you don't want to give birth to it because it hurts. God, make it stop. God, if you love me, why am I going through this? And I said it too back in the day. And sometimes I still wonder. I said, God, why do I go through so many things? The greater the anointing, the greater the trial. The greater the anointing, the greater tribulation. The greater the anointing, greater the testing. Because people are waiting on you. You can't give up. You can't stop. You got to give birth to your destiny at all cost. Oh, yes. Because guess what? The enemy has a perfect assignment, whether it be a man, a woman, or both. Yeah, I said it, because some of you are freaky, some of you are bisexual. Oh, I'm finna go here. Oh, God, you are you making me do it. I will be obedient. My God, my God, I knew you was going to do that. When I was in California, <laughs> I learned so much until it, it made me, I did cry a couple of times. I might have cried more than a couple of times. I, I remember when I first got saved. And I'm going here. I want to tell everybody about the past. That way the enemy couldn't come back and get me or say anything. Well, I know people still judge you on your past because I did everything but what a child of God should do. I, yeah, I did it. I ain't even going to lie because the devil don't have no hold on me. And, and I'm still getting judged by it, but that's all right. Since you God, go ahead and do that. Mm, yeah. And I tell you, I found out and I got in places. I'm talking about prominent pe preachers that you love and some of you going to get mad because y'all love, love them more than y'all love God. And the reason why I say that they can't do no wrong even when they're doing wrong. 
I found out most of them are bisexual. Yeah, I'm saying it. You can get mad all day long, go to God. Because trust me, they're going to start getting exposed. Before this is all over, you think God is going to just leave it like this? God said, I'm coming back for a spotless and a pure church. So you really think God is going to leave them in place? Okay, whatever. It broke my heart because I saw things with my own eyes that I didn't understand that preachers were doing. And yet, you want to preach to me? You want to preach to me? And yet, you doing this, 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 that? But if this is behind closed doors, it don't matter, right? That's a lie before God because he neither sleeps nor slumber. My people, let me tell you something. We better pray and you better pray well because the enemy is out to steal, kill, and destroy and he's starting in leadership. They are freaky. They're doing all kind of stuff. they putting people in position because most of them sleeping with them. They're doing all kind of stuff and yet get up in the pulpit on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, whenever they have church. Praise ye the Lord. Are you crazy? That is an abomination to God. Do you not think that you're going to get backlash? So here's what we do. We pray for them. But also pray that they be so obedient that they ask for help. You know, I have sinned. I didn't got myself in something. I don't know what to do. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because it seems like everybody has become a professional hider. I done made up another word. A professional hide. Well, well I'm just going to hide it. And, and long as I, I know God, I can do what I want to do. Well, I don't know what Bible you're reading because God says, I chastise who I love. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let me tell you about this fast. Why it is so important to do a fast. Matthew 17, 21 says, How be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Some of the things that you want God to do cannot be done without prayer and fasting. You remember David? When David prayed, you remember? And Michael said, I tried to come to you, but the devil was stopping me. The more you pray, don't you understand the more warfare going to happen anyway? That's why you have to press through. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You got to press through like never before. We have a church that's weak right now. And I'm not trying to bash you. I'm just trying to help you because I love you for real. You're weak. You can't take nothing. You don't want to go through nothing. You don't want to go through nothing. Let me tell you the difference between them saints in the Bible. Them saints in the Bible, they didn't even have cars. They had to walk everywhere. Them saints in the Bible, they had sandals. They didn't have shoes. Them saints in the Bible went through some stuff and yet they still were strong they still loved their God they still prayed to their God they still kept with their God they did not leave God for anybody let's go back to a point that I had earlier said church business have become business everybody want to brand themselves more followers PayPal me I have never gotten up on here especially on the live and okay I'm going to put PayPal Deanna I can't do it I can't do it. I don't feel right in my spirit. Hallelujah. How am I going with the word? Say, pay, pay me. Because it's, it's like I'm selling the word. And the gospel is free, said the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is not pleased. God is not pleased. So we got to come back home. We got to come back home to the oracles of God. What are the oracles of God? Walk in integrity. Walk in honor. Walk with a standard. Tell the truth. Stop lying, conniving. And most of them are doing it because of money. Trying to be famous. Like everybody don't know what you're doing. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. I said it. My God, my God. Woo! I feel the power of God, you guys. So that's all God told me to say and... I, could, I just keep hearing repent, repent, repent. I repent every day. Because I may have had a thought. Or you might say something that's not of God. And it doesn't have to be a curse word or anything. Just be mean to people sometimes. Or quickly being angered. I pray in the name of Jesus. That you actually go back and listen to this live. Because the power of God was so heavy up on me. God, you right. You right, Janelle. LeVar Skyer. God is a God of wrath. Yes, he loves us. He loves us. He loves us. But he is a God of wrath. And I'm going to be honest with you. Right now, the body's in trouble, y'all. There's too much people playing for money. 
too many freaks. Let me tell you something. That spirit of lust is real. Homosexuality in the body of Christ is big time. And, and, and the crazy part is, how are you going to be bisexual? How are you going to have a whole wife and sleep with a whole man? And the crazy part is this. Then you get the nerve up to stand up in a pulpit. A sinner can see things. A sinner can see things. Y'all understand? So if the sinner can see it, how much more the people of God? Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I pray that the body of Christ repent. So that's why we go on this 14 liquid, full liquid day fast. Pray for yourselves. Pray for your brother. Pray for your sister. Pray for the church. Pray for the sinners. Pray for the world. Pray for the ones that's not right because they're going to need it too. We all need it. Hallelujah. My God, my God. It hurts my heart. I, 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 I never thought I would see this day where so many... It's the, great, it's the great apostasy. People are falling from God just to have a dollar. And, and let's talk about that spirit of lust. That spirit of lust is a heavy spirit that cannot be broken without prayer and fasting. Because it's, it's an attachment. Every spirit is attached to another spirit. You're never just working with one spirit. Remember when Jesus was casting out the spirits into the pig? He said, who are these? He said, I am legion. Many. Hallelujah. My God, my God. So, this is the first day of the fast. Um, it's a full liquid fast. You can drink um, coffee if you want. You can drink juice, do smoothies. If you get hungry, you know, you can do chicken broth. Um, you can juice almost anything, you know. I, I hope y'all be trying to um, juice no meat and potatoes, though. Don't do that. I mean, don't do that. No. <laughs> Also, you can have um, tomato juice, um, you know, and, and, and pray throughout the day. Pray throughout the day. Pray for each other. Pray for yourselves. Don't just, oh, I want a car, I want a house, I want this. Pray earnestly. Because when you pray for others, God bless you. What you make happens for others, God will make happen for you. We forgot that concept in the body of Christ. It's not all about money and fame and, and, and sexual because that's what it has become. And I got to tell you something. Before you go into any house of God, oh, I know it's around here somewhere. My anointing Earl. Anoint yourself. Because I'm going to be honest with you. And <laughs> I know that's why they talk about me. So let me go ahead and, and tell them something. I was in church my whole life. I was ordained in church at 27 years old. As a matter of fact, I love church 2015 and yes I've yet to be under a leader God is my covering because one thing about church folks well she ain't got no covering and she on Facebook preaching honey and I'm just going to keep it real and I'm not trying to be all I, like I'm all that because that's not my character if I want to be a scholar I could and anybody that know me can tell you that I have earned the right to preach and teach and reach now, I might not have all what y'all think I should have, but that does not negate who I am. Yeah, I'm talking to a few of them. You think I don't hear you in the spirit talking about me? Don't get mad because I was called anointed and appointed, and I know it, hmm. and walk in it, because you better know who you are, especially in this hour, because the enemy is trying to tell you who you are not. So it's not arrogance. I know who I am. I know who called, called me. Hallelujah to his name. And tell you the truth, the apostles knew too. You got to walk like it, talk like it, be like it. Because you have a fierce enemy that is out to kill, steal, and destroy. And by any means necessary. So you better carry that anointing and you better carry it well. You better know your enemy up, down, roundabout, hallelujah. Because you're going to go through some stuff if you're anointed. Hallelujah. I'm just telling you like a T.I. is. Because um, y'all, <laughs> I, I, I don't get mad anymore. I just laugh because, and I'm going to keep it real. This is what they say. Well, she ain't got no big car. She ain't got no big house. I'll be honest with you. Even if God was to bless me with a million dollars, I probably wouldn't even get that anyway. I'd probably give it all away knowing me. Because how could I be in comfort? I'm talking about full comfort. Lavish. And my brother and sister can't even eat. But that's just my concept, okay? That's not yours. All right. 
So God bless you. God keep you. I love you. I'm going to do this every day. I'm going to bring a word every day for the 14 days. All right. And the word today was you're in labor. So push. Push. Yeah, I know it hurts. Push. I know they're talking about your push. I know you ain't got nothing. Push. Because I promise you, and this is a thus said the Lord. God said your ladder should be greater than your beginning. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare give up on you. Don't you dare give up on you. Everybody else could turn their back if they want. But God has never given up on you. And don't you give up on you. And I love you. You hear me? I don't care what y'all say. And there's nothing y'all can do about it. Even, even the ones that don't like me. I love you too. As a matter of fact, you make me greater. Thank you. <laughs> All right. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Roll out soldiers for that is who we are. God bless.